A hundred years ago, this was home to one young Eshel lad who was getting ready to march off to war. This is Joshua, Joshua Booth. He looks like quite a cheeky lad. Where did he live in the village? Well, he actually lived here. Oh, here? He is the landlord's son. So right. he lived at the wool pack, or the commercial as it was called then. The only son of Frederick and Mary Booth, before Joshua signed up, he was serving behind the bar of the pub and sorting wool at the local mill. How old is he? So he was about 22 when he went. He was very well known in the village. He played football, he was in the cricket team. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he was quite a catch. I'm getting a sense that he's a really likeable, cheeky lad who loves being part of the community. So Joshua would have marched off to war from here. And for many, it would be the first time they'd ever left the village, their families, their friends. It would be the first time that they'd ever been on a journey. I can't imagine what it would be like to have to go off Absolutely. to war. Absolutely, yeah. The Emmerdale casts are about to recapture a sense of this time at their big armistice event. It was a time of loves lost as generations of men marched to war, many never to return. Like many men in the village, Joshua was leaving behind a sweetheart. What I really want to know, who did he leave? Did he have a girlfriend? Here we are. She's Winnie. Winifred stood on the steps of this very pub. Oh, my goodness. So she looks oh. sort of, what, like 19, 20 or something? Yes, just a couple of years younger. She'd stayed here in about 1911 for six months. That's how they met. So they met before the war? They met before the war, and they fell in love here at Eschult uh, at the Woolpack. Winnie and Joshua's romance survives today through a series of wartime love letters that the couple wrote whilst they were apart. We are having a good Christmas on the whole. The only thing that spoils it is that you are not here to share it with us. I think about you every day, wondering how you are getting on. Yeah, so it comes across, doesn't it, how much he cares for her. It's really quite sweet. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, All those kisses, Joshua. It's been really strange coming to the real Emmerdale to learn about Joshua, who... I'm kind of intrigued, you know, this 22-year-old boy who was clearly full of life and suddenly he leaves the village into war, into the unknown. Hiya! On the Emmerdale set, the cast and crew are part of their own tight Yorkshire community. Okay, then. We're going to do a line run, everybody. Thank you. And just like Joshua, Charlotte's character is at the heart of village life. Funny going back to Eshel. Yeah, I know, amazing. Keen to find out what happened to those Eshel soldiers once they marched away, Charlotte's hitting the road. She's come to Catterick in North Yorkshire to one of the British Army's largest training grounds. Hi, I'm guessing you must be Adam. I am, and you're Charlotte. I am. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm hoping that you're going to tell me a bit more about Joshua. Yeah, absolutely. 22-year-old Second Lieutenant Adam Wishdish, the commanding officer on duty today, is exactly the same age as Joshua was when he signed up in 1914. They'd have gone to training first for a couple of months in places like Grimsby and Doncaster and across the Yorkshire Dales. What kind of training were they given? So we've got some archive footage to show you. Joshua and his Eshelt mates were just a handful of the six million British men mobilised over the course of the First World War. With most lacking any military training, the forces didn't have time to prepare so many troops for battle. You can see they're practising with sticks a lot of the time instead of guns uh, or rifles because there just wasn't enough to go around. I suppose what strikes me is that it kind of looks really like my legs, bums and tums at the gym class. It doesn't look very thorough, this training. Is that really going to prepare the men for war? With just this rudimentary training, Joshua and his company were posted to the French front line. They soon found themselves at the forefront of the deadliest campaign of the Great War, the Battle of the Somme. 